So, if you're lucky enough to have Disney Plus in your country, or if you have a VPN, then chances are you've probably seen The Mandalorian, and if you haven't, then you still probably know what Baby Yoda is, but don't worry, because a green infant free zone this tutorial is. I'll be guiding you through the steps I took to recreate this Raider ATST that was featured on the show, and I'll be using the ATST model from Star Wars Legion to do so. Priming is that ever important first step in miniature painting that will give us a good surface to apply our paints to. It's also really handy when it comes to getting that first base colour down as well. Luckily for us, Imperials have little to no imagination in their colour choices and almost always paint their vehicles in a uniform grey paint. I was able to recreate this grey colouring by mixing together a black and light grey airbrush primer, but it's very similar in colour to the Armour Painter's Uniform Grey and Games Workshop's Mechanica Standard Grey Aerosol Primer, so feel free to use those if you prefer. The Raiders ATST appears to be constructed from a few mismatched parts. It's likely that the remnants of several broken down walkers were cannibalised to create a single working vehicle. This is most prevalent in the legs, that are two different shades of reddish brown. My theory on this is that they are parts that were primed with red oxide primers, but never received their grey finishing coat of paint, or they were rushed into use during those desperate last days of the Empire. Something similar to this occurred during the final parts of World War II with Germany, a regime that the Empire shares many parallels with. So, to create this reddish oxide colouring, I chose to use some corn red. I thinned out the mixture first with some water to create a paint that was much smoother to apply before painting the whole left leg up to the highest circular joint. After the first coat had dried, you can then apply a second layer of your thin mixture to smooth out that colour further. This next step is much like the last. We'll be tackling the right leg now using some Mornfang Brown to give us a less reddish brown. This time around, we don't want to tackle the whole leg, just up to the middle joint. Using that same thin mixture, apply a couple of coats here once again to ensure that we get a smooth, even coverage. Now that we have our base colours, we can now start to do what I deem to be the best part of painting, weathering. With this ATST, we can really go all out, because after all, you can't expect that showroom level of presentation when it's spent the last five years in a forest being maintained by raiders. So what's called for here is an all-over wash of Agrax Earthshade. However, to make this go on a little easier and to prevent the vehicle from being darkened down too much, I've decided to mix in a little water for the step. Apply the wash liberally over all surfaces, ensuring it gets into all of those recesses. Just make sure it doesn't begin to pull into the areas, as the resultant effect can be an undesirable one. Once the wash has dried, what you'll be left with is a machine that not only looks incredibly grubby, but you will also notice that those details will stand out much more than they did before. This is a result of us adding shading to those recesses and getting a greater degree of contrast between those various panels and details. We made a great start on bringing out those details with the washes, but we can go one step further whilst also adding to that weathering effect as well. The technique to use next is called dry brushing. This involves taking a fairly large brush, dipping it into your paint, and then working the paint through the bristles by wiping it onto a piece of paper or a tissue. With only a little paint left in the bristles, you can then use some light, quick brush strokes over the surfaces, which will cause the paint to only accumulate on those raised areas and edges. By using a lighter paint, we can further increase that level of contrast between the lightest, most prominent parts and the darker recesses, ultimately improving how much detailed the surface looks. The paints I've chosen for the legs are their respective base coats mixed with a little of the paint Wraithbone. By creating this mixture, we are left with what appears to be a more faded version of our base layer, which, when applied, will create a slightly sun-bleached effect further building upon that weathering that we applied earlier. For the remaining grey areas, we'll be using the same dry brushing technique as before, however this time I'll be using the lighter Administratum Grey instead. Next up we have the line markings, and for these we'll be approaching them in two steps, both of which will involve applying some more Wraithbone. Begin by thinning out some Wraithbone and using a thin tipped brush and begin to apply some narrow guidelines over the cabin and the legs. Now the best reference point for these isn't actually the show, because if you've seen the episode, we only see the ATST in the dark, so the best place to see these markings is actually a Hasbro toy. So I'll include a link to uh, an Amazon page for that toy in the description below for you to check out for yourself, so you know exactly where to paint those lines. Now, 
Using a brush to mark all of these out will set us up nicely for the next step, which involves using a similar dry brushing technique in order to create that roughly applied effect. So with the wraith bone again, use your dry brush over the lines. This will thicken them up and make them appear as though they've been haphazardly applied. With the markings completed, the final steps involve just going all out on the weathering. To kick things off, we'll be using a sponge to apply some patches of rust or mud. Rough up the edge of the sponge before dipping it into some Doom Ball Brown. Remove some of the excess onto a piece of paper and then start to stipple the paint onto the surface. This will create some random and uneven texture that can create the appearance of patches of rust forming through the paintwork or reddish brown mud that has built up over time. The final step involves using our sponge once again to create some chips in the paintwork. By using some Abaddon Black, we can lightly press the sponge along some of the sharper edges. The small black flecks this creates will create an appearance of chips and dents in the armor's paintwork and armor. Focus this over the areas that you expect to see more damage to occur on, such as the legs and the front of the cabin. You can also use this paint along with a dry brushing method to add some blaster marks. Stipple a small round patch onto a point in the hull and then pull away from this patch in a horizontal line. You'll be left with a scorch mark that appears to have been deflected off the armor. While you have your dry brush handy, you can also darken down the brow tips of the various blaster cannons found on your ATST as well. With the painting completed, the only thing left to do is to assemble everything and to give everything a coat of matte varnish that will not only protect the paintwork, but also remove that glossiness caused by the washes. If you enjoyed this guide on giving your forces of scum and villainy some robo chicken reinforcements, or if you'd like to see me take on other Star Wars Legion schemes, then let me know in the comments below. But before I go, I just want to say a huge thank you to you guys who support me on Patreon. Your continued patronage really does help me with the costs of producing these videos. If you'd like to lend me a hand too, I've included a Patreon page in the description below where you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month. And for anyone looking to chat about all things wargaming with others who also enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server which you can find a link to in the description. So the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.